now available in paperback and Kindle, vampires stalk the darkness of the Eternal Night. Get your copy of Eternal Night in paperback and Kindle on Amazon.com. I was watching an organic video about two weeks ago where he was talking about how there were plans to import over half a million Indians to the United States in an effort to try to use these Indians as labor and also to use these Indians as a replacement for black Americans. Now, there have been efforts like this done before in the past, and they've all failed. And the reason why they have all failed is because no one wants to be in the place that black people are, because where black people are in American society is at the bottom of the world. Now, according to this plan, they want to bring these, again, half million people to replace black people. However, I can look at history over the last 20 years and campaigns to try to bring in other minorities to so-called replace black people and see how they failed miserably. Now, back in 2000, when Al Gore was running against George W. Bush, there was an effort to try to make Hispanics the new number one minority that would replace black people. And your mainstream media tried to go out here and push Hispanics as the new group by mainstreaming people like your George Lopez, your Jennifer Lopez, your Mark Anthony, and pushing shows like George Lopez as mainstream. However, these efforts all failed because what happened was the Hispanic community refused to go along with the program. Now, the reason why the Hispanic community didn't go along with the program is because the Hispanic community already has its own economic base and it has its own political machine. Now, this economic base that the Hispanic community has, it started on the foundation of the black community, but this economic base is an extremely powerful base. And this powerful base is international, and they have businesses all across the globe. And these Hispanic business people, they oftentimes work to protect their own interests. And these Hispanic community, they tend to work together as a group, and they work to protect not only their political interests, but they also work to protect their economic interests. So unlike black people who are looking to find white acceptance and white approval, the members of the Hispanic community aren't really interested in white validation or white approval from white Americans. They ha already have their own business institutions like Goya and Vita Rose, and even in neighborhoods like I used to live in, which was predominantly Hispanic, most of the store owners and most of the residents in that community oftentimes work together to participate in group economics. And they work so well that over the last three years, I was in my old neighborhood, they practically shut out every Arab business owner from coming into that Morrisania neighborhood. I mean, I watched as three to four Arab grocery stores practically were put out of business by Hispanics practically making an effort to just not shop there and support the local Hispanic bodegas in that neighborhood and other Hispanic-owned hair salons and other Hispanic-owned businesses. And because they did that, they practically kept anybody from coming into the neighborhood and taking money out of the community. Because what these white people want to do in business is get get the Hispanics to go quote unquote mainstream the way black people did during integration. And that didn't work at all because Hispanic community refused to go out here and spend their dollars with whites first. No, they spent their money with Hispanics first and they kept their money in their community. And as they kept their money in their community, they also continued to build up their political base because I remember in my own Bronx neighborhood, 
the and in the South Bronx in the Bronx overall, most of the politicians and most of the offices there were controlled by Hispanics. So this effort to try to get Hispanics to mainstream and be like black people, that completely failed. And again, it failed because most Hispanics are more interested in keep putting themselves first and putting their economy first and putting their politics first than black people are who are more about social integration and social acceptance. So they wound up not becoming a part of like black people. They wound up creating their own minority base and eventually became a larger population. Now they can't most politicians wanted that to happen because they wanted a group of voters that would vote in their best interest. However, what has happened because Hispanics became their own group, they wound up voting half conservative and half liberal, and that means they're not in the same position that black people are. Moreover, they cannot really sell the culture of America to the Hispanic community because the Hispanic community supports its own media. Now, black people, on the other hand, they usually have some media, but they really don't support it the way I've seen Hispanic people support their own media. Because again, I lived in a neighborhood around Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Cubans, and people from South America. And when it comes down to media, they put their media first. They're not out here seeking white validation or white approval. And I remember I was talking about Ugly Betty, the American version, and a Latina girl came to me and said, I like the, the other one better. And I was talking about how the other one was better. And she chimed in and said, the other one is better. So many Hispanic people, they will support their own content before they support our content. And that was one of the reasons why the entertainment industry completely failed to, to be able to mainstream the Hispanic community is because the Hispanic community had its own media and it had its own businesses and they put their businesses first. So those efforts to try to make Hispanics the new black people completely failed. And if anything, they were more interested in becoming the new white people than anything else. So they were looking to gain economic power and political power on the equal of a white person, and they were looking to gain that type of footing in this country. And that's why that campaign completely failed by about, I say about 2008 or 2009, and we saw that effort to try to make Hispanics replace black people completely fail. Now we have this new plan of importing 500,000 Indians to try to have them work and replace black people. But this will also fail as well, because just like the members of the Hispanic community, members of the Indian community have their own way of life, their own way of culture, and also they have their own economic base. And because they have their own economic base already in India, they already have money flowing into their community. And if they do anything at all, they're going to use the economic base that they have here in order to empower themselves. So a lot of companies are thinking, oh, we're going to get some cheap labor. No, what's going to happen is these individuals are going to use the system in order to gain the skills that they need and then go out here and build businesses and then participate in group economics and then gain more political power and then use that political power to be able to push their agenda the same way the Hispanic community has pushed their agenda. So replacing black people, that's going to be something that's going to be, as I see it, next to impossible because no other group out here wants to be black people because black people are seen as the bottom of the world. And black people are seen as the bottom of the world because no, there's no other group out here that is completely socially fragmented the way black people are. I mean, the black community has so many divisions that this one, that's one of the advantages that your whites were able to capitalize on as related to the codependent relationship they have with black people. Because the 
other groups in these in these minorities, they have interdependent relationships with whites and they demand on to be on an equal footing where they get equal exchange in order to get things done. For them, everything is a business transaction, but for black people, everything is a social transaction because most black people, as they are fragmented, they want social acceptance above economic empowerment, and they want social approval from whites because they are having a codependent relationship with white people, and they want social acceptance from those white people, at, and they will even sacrifice things like economic power and political power in order to gain access to those white people who will give them social acceptance. So there won't be any way you can replace black people in this country because there's nobody who has that type of low self-esteem, low self-worth, and there's nobody out here looking for social acceptance the way black people are. No, all of these other minorities, when they come to this country, they are thinking about economic empowerment and they are thinking with a business mindset. So there may be efforts to try to replace black people, but you will never replace black people in this country because black people, while they are struggling out here, they're struggling only because of their mindset and you can't replace a group that is at the bottom and is needed to be at the bottom by these racists in order to have their smooth world. And most other minorities, they're going to sit there and they're not going to allow you to put them at that bottom position because they have no interest in being in a codependent relationship and they have no interest in being at the bottom of somebody's world because they're not, in again, in a social relationship with whites they are not seeking social approval from whites. They are not seeking social validation from whites in most cases. Now, while these groups do believe in white supremacy and support white supremacy, they only support it because they get economic benefits and they can use those economic benefits to gain leverage as long as the black people remain at the bottom. So replacing black people, that's something nobody wants to do because nobody wants to be at the bottom. Nobody wants to be the, the person who is in that codependent space where they become the abused and nobody wants to be in that place where they have to be the perpetual victim and punching bag that many black people will, will willfully want to be in order to gain that social acceptance from white people. So replace if you re there's nobody who wants to replace black people in this country in many cases they may be imported to be cheap labor but what they will do is use that small base in order to start get the capital to start their own businesses and then they will flip the game on these white people on who are running things here in America by either taking economic resources out of the country or taking economic resources out of the country, starting businesses in their country, and then using that to transfer wealth to themselves that they can spend in their own country. So the only people who don't do this are black people, and many black people don't do this because their minds aren't right, and many are so caught up in their self-hatred that they cannot think about empowering themselves. All they're thinking about is taking power away from the next black man in order to receive approval from the next white man. So when you think, when I hear things like talking about how they want to replace black people, nobody can replace black people because no one is going to allow somebody to turn, put them in a codependent relationship. No, the only people who allow this is black people because they have been beaten and broken by slavery to believe codependence is a healthy relationship and codependency is a social norm that they should aspire to. Everybody else buys into the concept of economic empowerment and economic interdependence 
And that's, that's something that many people don't think about. They're just thinking, oh, they're going to try to use these people to replace black people. But any people with any sort of self-worth, they're not going to want to be in that position because no one wants to be at the bottom of a civilization and no one wants to be put in a codependent situation where they're going to be abused. I mean, any every other group, when they try to put, participate in police brutality against a, a Muslim or they try to do this against a Hispanic person, like in the case of Anthony Baez a couple of years ago here in New York, there was a major pushback on that. And as a result, the officer who choked out Anthony Baez wound up going to prison very quickly because the Hispanic community, they were not going to go into this whole codependent march and protest, shuck and jive, blame and shame game. No, they had politicians in place who were working for the Hispanic community and they had people in place to ensure that they would be able to get the tangible of justice. The only people who allow this stuff to go on are black people, and that's because black people don't have the self-esteem or the self-worth to stand up and fight back, nor do they have the courage to use their $3.3 trillion of cash and credit in economic power to go out here and support their own businesses, support their own infrastructure, support their own media, and protect their own interest and protect their own image, and go out here and have politicians who work for black interests. They don't have, we don't have that unity like other people. And you can, the whole thing is that people try to replace black people, but you cannot replace the black people because no one, again, is going to put themselves in that codependent situation. Healthy people whose minds have not been broken by white supremacy and 400 years of slavery and 100 years of Jim Crow, 50 years of feminism, and 50 years of discrimination, healthy people are not going to allow any group to attach emotional hoses to them and try to verbally and physically abuse them the way black people have been abused in this country. No one is going to allow that to happen because they understand their value as people. They understand their value as human beings. And black people have to start understanding their value as human beings because we should not allow ourselves to be at the bottom of this world. We should not allow ourselves to be looking for somebody else's social acceptance. No, we should be setting a standard for ourselves, a standard for our community, and a standard for everything because if we are at the bottom as the foundation for everybody getting rich at our expense, then we need to take our money and enrich ourselves first. And when we do that, we wind up toppling the entire structure and there won't, they, people will see the true value of the black man, the black woman, the black dollar, and the black community because everybody co-depends on black people in order to enrich themselves. And these efforts to try to replace black people always fail because again, no one will allow themselves to be put in that abused position at the bottom of the world and no one will allow themselves to be used and abused where their 97% of their dollars are used to make everybody else rich while they remain poor. If you'd like to see me make more videos like this because this one's not going to get monetized, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to pick up some of my Men's Issues books or my African American Fantasy Fiction, you can find all of those titles on Amazon.com, Smashwords, the iBookstore, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, E-Steam, The Sands of Time. It's action and adventure in ancient Egypt in this terrific teen time travel romance. Get your copy of E-Steam, The Sands of Time at your favorite online bookseller today.